Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul, watchman on the wall, standing tall in the glory of it all. Jesus Christ is my Lord, my Savior, and my God. In him shall I put my trust. I shall not lean on my own understanding, yet shall I praise him in all I say and all I do. Surely he comes quickly. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I can't stop my lips from praising him if I had 10,000 tongues. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory and honor and praise. We will be with him soon. This I know. This I know. Sorry for my appearance. I've been a little tired lately. Been going up to see my... Uh, my father, his name's John. Um, it's like it's like one day it's, you're up and the next day you're down, like a, a roller coaster. I was up there with him for a while. It's about an hour and a half drive there, an hour and a half drive back, and up north because it's a hospital that specializes in, in what he's going through. He was actually life flighted from Gridley in the helicopter and landed on the roof. <laughs> I'm still amazed by that. Uh, he said he enjoyed the flight. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, it's so wonderful when you have Jesus in your life. I'm going to say that again. It's so wonderful and peaceful and blessed when you have the mercy of Jesus Christ in your life and the grace over your marriage and over your ministry over your house, the protection that comes with it. Would you please come to Jesus? If you don't know Jesus, I've been saying this for years, please come to him today. An airliner was shot down, a 777 with seven miles of debris flying at 33,000 feet in an area that I would just been Google earthing. On my last video, I mean, come on people, can't you see that he's coming? Don't you want to get in the ark and be safe? Remember Noah? They laughed at him. They scoffed at him. They mocked at him. He kept saying, it's going to rain. Why? Could God tell me, it's going to rain. Well, I'm here saying, look, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I sit before you now. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. And there's going to be escalations of wars and escalations of earthquakes and natural disasters and pestilence and thunders and you do not want to be here and I'm inviting you to meet Jesus for free, for free, for free. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. That song just hit me. This, there's this song called Here I Am to Worship. Um, it's sung by a female, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but please go down into the video description box, put on this song, lift up your hands and just say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. As the song plays, after this closes, find the description, find the video link to the song called Here I Am to Worship. Lift up your hands and say, I submit to you, Jesus. And just begin to praise him and, and to, to, to worship Jesus. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. You, in other words, and you must know that he is. So you have to believe that he is and that you, that you can come to him boldly. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. You could do that right now. Don't wait another day, please. Let me get the, this update on my father before I just fall out and praise and you can have peace and joy and love uh, and hopefully have your hair looking better than mine ain't no shame in my game I'm on here uh, preaching Christ crucified to the Jew first and also into the Gentile until the fullness of the Gentiles come in and then we just go up and forever are with him and there's no more tears there's no more crying there's no more need for a son because Jesus is the light <laughs> There's no more uh, there's no more need for the sun because Jesus is the light. You feel that? Jesus is the light. 
Ye are the salt of the earth, and Jesus is the light. And this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when you begin to talk about Jesus, the whole atmosphere changes in a prophetic fashion. You begin to feel his presence. You begin to, to feel his love. You begin to want to share him. Thank you, Jesus. If you had any idea what I'm going through, you'd be jumping out of your chair right now. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about what I'm going through. So uh, last Thursday, uh, last Thursday, and today's Thursday, uh, 7, 17, 14, by the way, at exactly 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, they rushed my father from Gridley. He called 911. He thought he was having a heat stroke. He uh, was taken to Gridley, five minutes away, Gridley Hospital, Biggs, B-I-G-G-S. And um, he was, they, they didn't have the, they, they said he had 24 hours to live. Mm. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What they said is irrelevant in my life because I'm a child of the Most High. And so uh, they flew him by helicopter up to a place called Inlo. And I've, I've been going up there and my wife with me as she can every day. And you know, there was one day I showed you that he received salvation. He received the free gift of salvation that I want you to receive. He received it. I laid my one hand on his chest and one hand on his head. I pray with him every day when I go up there. I lay hands on him. I mean, these hands of yours, lift your hands up like this. These hands are to be used for the purpose of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What are you doing with your hands today? What are you doing with your mouth today? Just saying. So I've been laying hands on him every day and every day. Um, this, this is his diagnosis. This is what the doctors say. Um, he has... Uh, confirmed advanced aggressive prostate cancer uh, with uh, kidney failure stage 5. The kidney failure uh, was caused by the prostate cancer. They went in and what they did a couple days ago, he's going to be in the hospital for I think another week. They went in and put um, two stents up by his bladder because his bladder wasn't draining so his kidneys weren't flushing you understand because there was a blockage there and by doing a bone scan and going up in him, in him and taking a what do you call that a bi biopsy um, they were able to determine that it's a, a very aggressive prostate cancer I'm not going to sugarcoat this it's a very aggressive prostate cancer. They have this thing called a Gleason score, G-L-E-A-S-O-N, and it's from one to 10 on how aggressive the carcinoma is, and his is a nine. And then on the kidney numbers, when he went to Gridley, he was a, uh, his, uh, he has creatine, which is a, like protein in, in his uh, kidneys, uh, his, creatine number uh, was 7.5 that's why they said he had 24 hours to live since being transferred and uh, being on all types of medicines and, and great wonderful care great wonderful care and prayer because Jesus Jesus is the light Jesus is the light um, his, his number dropped to 5 and then yesterday when I left, the doctor just gave me a very grim and poor diagnosis and I came home very discouraged. I meet with the doctor every day. Um, uh, he's on Casadex once a day and an injection once a month. And his renal was unchanged yesterday. He's been given a uh, stage D2 uh, they found that it has the, the 
prostate cancer has spread to his pelvis bone. It could spread to his femur. And if it spreads to his spine, and what it does, it just eats away the bone and become brittle and they just break. He would, uh, if, it, if it spread to his, and I'm not pronouncing that, I said it won't, but in other people, amen. When it spreads to your, your spine area and that, you can go, uh, you can get paralyzed from the waist down. His has spread to his bones. Prostate cancer spreads through your bones, not through the lymphatic system of other cancers of people I've prayed for. <sighs> Shed so many tears, man. Shed so many tears, but for some reason I'm full of joy today. Shed so many tears. My wife's mother, my wife's brother, my brother, my mom, and I'm still standing. I have a scripture, but I want to just let you know as much as I can on this update. I took a picture of the a chart the doctor had with my cell phone. He's very nice. He's a very nice doctor. And I'll give you some medical terms. Maybe you can read about it. Because I think they're going to let him go home if it doesn't take a quote turn for the worse, which we're believers in Christ. Uh, he's positive for Paraneural invasion, which means it is spread, metastasized. Uh, they suspect uh, PT3. P, I'm going to say that again. PT3, AGCC tumor stage. And that's, uh, there's no cure for this, but Jesus, there's no cure. The doctor looked me right in the eye yesterday, said that the two things he has, there's no cure for chronic kidney failure stage five and uh, this it's called prostatic adenocarcinoma with a Gleason scale of nine period neural invasion is present suspicious for periprostic fat invasion which is again another method of spreading and um, what do you uh, I guess that's it. Um, so let me go to the good news. Amen. I would ask for your prayer. Prayer for my whole family and, and continue to pray for Israel. And there's so many people that need prayer. I pray daily. Prayer is a weapon. When you open up your mouth and pray, all of heaven perks up and takes attention. So we must live in prayer. Um, I just called him this morning, or rather he called me, I'm sorry. He has a phone and he can talk and call. He has a private room. The little things, you know. My mom had a private room too. His, his score, I'm going to put a link to this site. Uh, it's called your GFR. It's your flow rate. Um, uh, he, and, and how much creat tells you what stage. Yesterday at 4.7, it went from 7 to 5.3 to yesterday when I left, the doctor said it was 4.7. And there's this calculator you can put up. It says stage 5. Prognosis poor. And this kidney thing is separate from the prostate cancer thing, which is aggressive. And it's just all too much to think about. But the Lord gives me strength. Amen. Come to Jesus. Today he called me and he said it's dropped. See, they look at the he's in the catheter and they look at the color of the urine and it was really dark. The the first day I went up there, I cried my eyes out all the way home because his 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 urine bag was just all red blood, and he's uh, anemic, so they give you more blood. You know, all that blood in the bag is gone, and then the urine was dark, which is really bad, and it's an indicator that it's really bad. Today it was lighter, and today his uh, serum creatinine number was 3.9. So on this calculator, under age, if you put 78, and serum creatinine 3.9, and gender male, and race white, overnight. And thank you for praying. Thank you, Jesus. Ready for the testimony? Overnight, by a miracle of Jesus Christ, he went from stage five chronic kidney failure to stage four. 
They're going to keep him another week. And you know what he told me? He's praying it, it, when he gets out of the hospital, it'll be in the twos. You see his faith? It'll be in the twos. And you know, he could live into his 80s. So I'll put a link to this calculator. Remember, he's a male, white, 78 years old, and the, the creatinine number is 3.9. I'll post these numbers in this video as updates to watch it drop. It will drop in Jesus' name. Because Jesus is the light. And uh, when I got home yesterday, I was overwhelmed and overcome. I thought about my mom and my wife's mom and my brother and her brother. And uh, the Lord comforted me. He said he will never put more on you than you can bear. And he gave me Matthew 7. And I'm going to close out by reading this. Matthew 7, verse 24 through 27. I will put a link. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, what Jesus said, and, and, there's an and, and doeth them, King James. So you hear them and you do them. Uh, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and I'm in the middle of a storm right now of unprecedented proportions as all hell breaks loose all over the world and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Hallelujah! It fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now people, build your house on the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ, and he is the light. Come to him today. We're expecting miracles, signs, and wonders in the year of 2014. We know that Jesus Christ is coming back for us. We have an expected end and expected future. We're peculiar people. We're royal priesthood. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This is Minister Paul, watchman on the wall, standing tall, believing in miracles, believing in Jesus Christ. And I built my house on the rock. And I'm begging you to also because a storm's coming. Shalom.